All right. Sorry for the technical problem. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks, Cliff, and uh, also Heather for inviting us here. Um, so today, I will. Um, today, we heard a lot about different uh, ways uh, in which uh, quantum hardware is being progressed, and uh, one thing that came out a lot was uh, that we need uh, frictionless software. We need something to connect end users or classical compute to the uh, quantum devices. And today I will show you how we uh, at QControl have developed um, performance enhancing software and really show you on current hardware, uh, quantum devices how much improvement can you get with that. So um, similar to uh, what uh, today Heather mentioned, the uh, various analysts have uh, come up with the different numbers for the quantum industry. Uh, there was some BCG report uh, a few years back talking about uh, that this industry is a $850 billion um, market opportunity. That's a very big number. And, uh, but think about it, uh, why, have we, why is there not uh, any results in that direction? And the key reason is that quantum hardware is very, very susceptible to noise. And to give you an example, so consider this simple uh, algorithm that came up. It's a, a search algorithm in an unstructured array. It's called Grover Search. And um, in, uh, on the x-axis are different uh, possibilities of uh, so different bit strings that uh, could be there. Um, on the top, you see a simulation of this algorithm. So if everything went right, uh, when you measure it, you should see this uh, the, uh, the bit string marked by the dashed line uh, with very high probability. So when you sample from uh, this quantum uh, computer, you should see that with very high probability. On the bottom is actually an experimental run of this algorithm. And you can see this is a five qubit algorithm. We have been talking about thousands of qubits and here just a five qubit algorithm. You run it and you get pretty much noise. So then the question becomes, well, what happened to the benchmarks, uh, all the uh, different numbers that we keep talking about, uh, they are very high, but when you run a simple algorithm, it's not working. And um, towards the, uh, through the talk, I will show you how we can actually make it work. Um, so there are three ways uh, to deal with um, errors in quantum systems. One which is uh, largely talked about is quantum error correction. That is kind of the holy grail that uh, everyone is trying to go towards. Now for that we need millions of qubits, you need uh, them to also improve a particular uh, level, the errors in the gate should be low enough. Then, so that's maybe like a few tens years uh, away. Um, then there is something called error mitigation where, okay, you don't need that good uh, error rates, but you still uh, have very high overhead in terms of how many, um, say, how, much, how many extra samplings you need, how many extra qubits you need, and, and this uh, overhead blows up exponentially as you increase the problem size. So imagine something like you want to run a simple circuit and it takes like a year to run it to, because of the overhead sampling that you need to do uh, to get any meaningful answer. Now that's not something feasible. Um, the last thing uh, is error suppression. So this is a technique that's been there, researched in academia for a long, long time. Like there's decades of uh, uh, technical um, work that has been there where you can use quantum mechanisms itself to cancel out the quantum noise through destructively interfering them uh, so that whatever there is noise in the environment, you actually become uh, immune, uh, immune to it. And um, so uh, in generally all these methods I've been talking about require experts. You need people with lots of PhDs, lots of uh, experience in that field to uh, configure it to just work right. Uh, at QControl we work on uh, these methods, but primarily we uh, have been um, like currently working at uh, error suppression, which we think, uh, right, which we'll, I'll show you, uh, is current devices you can get improvement. And the key is, because in error suppression we are using the quantum interference itself, there is zero overhead. So if you want to run one circuit through after going through this pipeline, you actually run exactly one circuit on a quantum device. So that is 
um, in some sense, a lot of money saved, but also a lot of time saved. Um, we have uh, published our work in various uh, journals. Um, so the, the point I'm trying to communicate is that deterministic error suppression, where there is no randomization, you use exactly the uh, physics uh, concepts that have been developed uh, to get the best performance, has com uh, enabled completely different scientific outcomes. And um, you can look up this work if any of you are interested in or talk to me afterwards. So this is great from scientific perspective, but we want to uh, enable it uh, to a given u any user. Uh, and if you think about it already at quantum uh, like circuit level, that's like assembly language. And now if we ask people to, oh, actually you need to think at the pulse level at how you are interacting uh, atoms and uh, superconducting qubits, that's too much to ask. And that's not a way how a, an industry can progress faster. So what we have done uh, here is we have abstracted a way that uh, all those optimization levels and uh, you, we can directly connect to a quantum computer to a, an application and user. So let's uh, take a deep dive into what are these components of this uh, optimization that I'm talking about. Um, so, so on the left, you see uh, an input circuit. So this is some circuit that uh, you might be interested in running. Could be some search algorithm, some machine learning algorithm, some quantum simulation or optimization algorithm. So first thing we do is we uh, pass it through a compiler chain. Um, this essentially makes sure that the circuit that you have, we try to find what is an equivalent representation of that circuit in fewest number of gates. So this um, effectively reduces the number of operations that you need to do to achieve the same result. Then we uh, take the circuit and map it to the device. So typically, let's say you have a 100 qubit device and you want to run a 30 qubit uh, algorithm. Now this device is not all qubits are same, not all gates are same. There's a lot of inhomogeneity throughout the device. So it's very crucial to determine how would you map this uh, circuit onto the device. So that's something that we do uh, based on the errors that we characterized beforehand. Last, uh, after that, what we do is we uh, use uh, various schemes like dynamical decoupling um, and other uh, methods to suppress the error. So you have these crosstalks, and I was mentioning that you can use quantum interference to cancel them out. This is how we cancel, at this stage we cancel them out. Then uh, at this point you have a circuit with uh, different operations in there. Now we can uh, replace the operations um, the pulses, the microwave pulses that are going into the uh, uh, quantum chip, uh, we change the shape of those pulses to get the most optimized operation for uh, at that level. Now at this point you have some uh, sequence of microwave pulses which is sent to the quantum computer. We take um, uh, whatever uh, is measured out, we take the outcome, we further do uh, error measurement error mitigation because at the end of the day, uh, like in quantum, when you measure, there is some measurement error. You, when you're class, trying to classify whether it's zero or one, there is some measurement error, so we uh, mitigate that. And at the end, uh, we have a complete uh, result, which is uh, fully deterministically error suppressed. And each step in this process is deterministic. There is no uh, variability or there is no requirement for over uh, randomization or sampling here. So all these things are actually now automated with a single line of code, right? Like fire opal dot execute, you just send your backend object, you send your circuit, and you just get the best performance for this particular thing. So let's look at what do I mean by best performance. Um, here is um, experimental data again. Uh, the first two plots are the same ones that I showed earlier. Um, on the right side in purple, we have uh, the same circuit run through uh, our pipeline. And you can very clearly see that firstly, the distribution looks much more similar, but more importantly, in this particular case, the mode of the distribution is exactly same as the mode of the distribution in the simulation. So in this search case, if you looked at the distribution, you would be like, yeah, okay, that's the answer I'm looking for. Um, so there is, there is still some noise, it's not exact, uh, but it is, uh, what we're trying to do is we are pushing the uh, hardware to its actual limit. Um, and this is also highlighting that this is completely in software. It's the same quantum chip. Nothing has changed uh, physically. It's just the software has improved it. 
And you can get over 1,000x improvement through that. Um, and this kind of improvement scales with device size. Uh, so let's say, so here is another such algorithm, Burst and Vazirani, um, and every plotted the data in a different way. Uh, so x-axis is, what is the likelihood you get a wrong answer? Uh, y-axis is, how many times do you have to sample this circuit? Uh, and here you can see that like, uh, for a different number of qubits, yes, you need uh, more, um, rip, more sampling, but within 400 shots, you, like, you are 99% confident that you, the mode of the distribution that you are sampling is truly the answer. And in this case, without uh, using such kind of error suppression methods at such uh, like, uh, number of qubits, you get zero times the correct answer, even if you sample like 32,000 times. So it just uh, highlights that we, like deterministic error suppression is, has to become a part of the uh, whole pipeline. Without that, we are just uh, throwing away all the performance that we have for no reason. Now I'll uh, take a step uh, I will uh, change the direction now and uh, move uh, from dis deterministic algorithms to more hybrid-like algorithms because in near term, that's something that uh, people are exploring where you use uh, classical and quantum computers uh, together uh, and try to see if you can get some answers. One of the uh, few simple algorithms that, uh, or the motives that people think about a lot in this case are this VQE and QAOA uh, algorithms. The exact details are not so important, but the key is to think of them as uh, you have some kind of uh, ansatz which you uh, write in um, your quantum circuit, you run it on the quantum computer, you get some results. Based on that, you have a logic that determines, okay, how do you want to change the um, ansatz uh, or like the parameters in the ansatz and then you do a, a, cl a closed loop optimization there. Um, and here what we have done is we have um, also uh, added like be on top of the error suppression pipeline that I mentioned before, we have also automated some key parts of it where how do you parameterize this quantum circuit? What is an efficient parameterization? What kind, of, uh, opti uh, what kind of optimizers make sense for quantum systems? Uh, so these are the things that um, we, are, uh, we have kind of uh, automated, and, uh, and now it's, also, it's available to uh, end users. Again, going back to this uh, philosophy that we need to abstract away some of the details that have been already figured out, right? Like we don't need to reinvent every part of the pipeline uh, every time. So here, for example, in this, uh, this one line of code, uh, what you can do is you can give it a graph problem. So you just define a graph. You, nothing, there's no quantum gate involved here. You define a graph, you define a cost function, and then you just tell which machine you want to run in, and it will do it for you. And let's see what kind of results you'll get. So uh, here is, uh, for example, um, distribution on the top is another uh, distribution. So I, in quantum, everything is distribution because we are always measuring from this distribution. Um, so on the top is a simulated distribution for a particular uh, max cut problem. Uh, it's a graph coloring problem, uh, which can be formulated in this QAOA formalism. And you see that the ideal bit string are this purple marked uh, bit string um, and um, Ideally, you would get like 30% success probability of getting it. Um, so if you run it on a default, it's pretty much just flat noise. Like the probabilities are completely distributed over, uh, so it's a seven qubit problem, so it's completely distributed over two power seven uh, possibilities. Uh, but when you run it through the pipeline, you actually recover the signal very clearly. Uh, and now it's like, almost 20% success probability of getting that bit strings. And that, that's like very clear signal there. Um, this is to show that, again, between these two plots, all that has changed is software. It's the same device. So, um, that, so it, like that, you can get like uh, over 1,000x improvement on different kinds of algorithms. We have done exhaustive study uh, over different um, like comparing to different methods, and you can find that in our manuscript mentioned below. Um, and yeah, so maybe one quick minute for uh, talking about Q control, as we saw different stacks that we um, mentioned before. Q control is a middleware. Um, 
provider in some sense, and uh, we go all the way from quantum firmware level to error correction, um, connecting to user applications. And uh, we, have be, have, we have received a lot of awards. Uh, we run over 15 billion jobs on IBM quantum systems, uh, almost 16 billion now. Um, and uh, we, um, we, our products are used by various commercial, academic, and government entities right now. Um, as a call to action um, here, um, we also have a product called Black Opal, where, which is kind of like Duolingo for quantum. So there, I know there are lots of uh, video courses and programs out there, uh, but if you want to just get started in non-equation um, like form in some sense to get intuition for it, that's something to start at. And let me know if you have any other questions.